Today we're going to be editing this photo of a wren. Beginning with the crop, we move to initial background work, radial filter, eye work, baseline color balance, shadow brushing and highlights, color adjustments, and final finishing touches. I hope you enjoy the video and the timestamps to each section can be found in the description below. I went with a fairly aggressive crop on this shot, wanting to focus on the inherent motion in the snow and the bold focus on the stick and bird. I made the stick be the bottom right third and the wren fit nicely into the right middle third. Here I did all my usual adjustments. I turned the brights down some, up the shadows and push the blacks down for better micro contrast. And, of course, I did the auto level, which is one of the better tools in the software. First, we create a new adjustment layer. And we're going to rename it for clarity. This is a good thing to do, and I forget a lot of times, but try to get in the habit. Then we start right where we want the nearly subconscious or imperceptible focal point to be located. For me, that's almost always the eye. By creating the initial shape of the radial, we can then click shift and drag the outer edge with the mouse button. This will make a long, smooth filter, which will be far more subtle than the classic vignette. From there, we can go ahead and turn the brightness down, which will draw you back in to that darker, overcast winter feel. That's important for this photo, as it was a defining characteristic of the moment. One of the most important points in any photo I take is the eye of the creature we're communicating with. Sometimes we get lucky and the iris is clear and defined. Other times, most times, we need to enhance it a bit. To do this, I'd start with the Dodge style brush and adjust the setting so it is the appropriate size. I tend to go heavy on the flow of the mask, mostly because we can always adjust the opacity later on. Here, I rename it, again, good practice so we know what we're doing. We can go ahead and add a little bit of extra brightness to the preset brush. So we're modifying it, making it our own. Then we can turn the opacity down a bit to refine the intended effect. As I was looking at the eye, it still seemed overdone. To fix this, I switched over to the eraser and modified it to be more refined. This allowed me to go in carefully and delineate only the part we actually want altered, namely the iris. To correct our baseline color balance, we need to create a new filled adjustment layer and immediately rename it. You could do this on the background directly, and I do do that a lot of the time, but I find it's cleaner to separate it so we know exactly what is happening where. Our primary goal with this adjustment is to bring the white balance and resulting color balance back into line with the original scene. It was a gray winter day, and the balance needs to reflect that. C1 and Sony tend to veer towards the warmer tones with their raw files and conversions, so this is one of the more common adjustments I have to make. In this instance, I ended up settling on a straight 5400 temperature and accepting the tint adjustment from 1.7 to negative 0.1. When you switch between the before and after, it's easy to see how we've enhanced the photo for the better. Next, I added contouring and shaping of the light through two layers. The first is accentuating the shadows. I used the brush tool and set it to darken the shadows and remove some brightness. Midway through, I increased the contrast to selectively add back some of the contrast we removed on the background layer at the start. The goal here is to build the effect extremely incrementally. If you rush in with a high setting, you will get dark streaky patches that will look terrible. 
I tend to build up shadows in 1% increments. It takes a bit, so I've sped up the process for you here. At this point, I've really gotten down to the fine tuning of this quote unquote painting with shadows, enhancing the areas where it should be just a bit darker. It adds depth and interest to the photo in a subtle but effective way. Similarly, adjusting the highlights in the photo will further enhance the aspects we were just working on. Now that we know where the light isn't reaching as effectively, we can accentuate the spots where it is. For this photo, that will be the accents on the bird and the snow. Adding a pop of light to the already active snow brings us closer to the scene and increases the perception of depth. It is important to not overdo any of these adjustments as they can quickly become very obvious and the photo will suffer from a lack of realism. The goal is to do just enough to give a rich tonality that mimics the depth of color and contrast one will perceive in real life. In turn, this connects the viewer more closely to the subject. After creating a new layer and remembering to fill it, which I did not in this instance and I'll correct shortly, it's time to focus on the overall color editing and balancing in this photo. This is generally one of the final steps I take in any development. Essentially, in this instance, we want to make the greens a bit richer. The blurry ivy leaf should be much darker. In addition, we want to enhance the red-brown tones of the bird and the surrounding branches just a bit. Now we'll move down to the color balance wheel and adjust the shadows, mids, and highlights, as well as the master. To do this, I take each in turn and make it the most extreme version possible, backing it down once I have found a color that complements the photo. As you can see, the changes are almost imperceptible once I have finished, but I think it adds a lot of cohesion. And finally, we're in the home stretch with this development. At this point, I tend to take my time and fool around with various settings until the photo reaches that truly cohesive and finished feel to me. I generally stop before I think I should to prevent over editing. The final layer I added here is to return a bit of the warmth we removed at the beginning. By inverting the radial mask, we can expand it outwards to send a very subtle glow from the subject. This in turn, brings us much closer to the creature, a beacon of life in the cold winter. And with that, we're done. I want to thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it a great deal.